Hello and welcome to the Tuesday, June 4th, 2024 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. One of the amazing things about Wireshark is not just that it can analyze and capture packets, but also the huge number of different protocols it is able to dissect. No matter how many protocols the creators of Wireshark's are adding, of course, there are always more protocols out there. And you may run into a case where Wireshark doesn't support a particular protocol that you're interested in. Well, uh, Didier today has a great diary walking you through how to create your own packet dissectors for protocols like this in Lua. The demo that Didier has includes also a video showing you how to do it. Does cover protocols with fixed links. So it's a little bit the simpler protocols, uh, like no flexible links, no sort of length fields that you then have to analyze and make decisions based on. But uh, still something that's uh, quite common and useful in the particular example that uh, Didier is using for the diary. Didier is looking at a protocol used to update firmware. The dissector is, of course, downloadable, so you can take a look at the Lua script, uh, but uh, also there is a video walking you through, and the real goal here is to help you write your own Lua script to analyze some custom or a little bit odd protocol. And security researcher Sam Curry did publish a blog post with severe vulnerabilities in an API the cable modem provider Cox is using in order to manage its customers' modems. The investigation was originally inspired or started after Sam believed that their cable modem was compromised. Now, there is no real proof that the compromised cable modem and these API leaks are related to each other, but it's certainly possible. Cox has confirmed the weakness in the API, but has stated that these weaknesses, as far as they can tell based on their logs, have not been exploited. Either way, it sort of is a good reminder to be wary of any ISP provided equipment. Uh, Quite often ISPs are quite conservative uh, with firmware updates because any firmware update, of course, may mean that a percentage of devices are not going to reboot and are basically leading to unhappy customers and uh, support calls. On the other hand, uh, if you do use your own modem, in particular in the cable modem world, typically the provider will flash their own firmware on the device. So it's not that you're in any better shape if you rent a modem from the provider or if you are providing your own modem. Probably the best advice here is treat the modem as just that, a modem, put them in bridge mode, disable any additional features, in particular Wi-Fi access points that are part of the modem, then connect it to your own security device, your own firewall, and treat everything outside of that firewall as hostile. And so far as you don't trust the ISP's equipment or equipment like a modem that they control, even if you own it. And Pleeping Computer has a good summary of some recent reports of malicious answers uh, in Stack Overflow. Originally, I believe this was found by Sonatype, who reported it. But the problem here is not innocent uh, bad answers. And we, of course, had that often covered before, where answers do include vulnerabilities, like, for example, SQL injection flaws. What we're talking here about is where an answer suggests an outright malicious uh, package, for example, as a solution to a particular problem in order to just uh, trick the victim into installing that malicious piece of software. 
And for a recently patched vulnerability in Atlassian's uh, Confluence data center and server, we now have a proof of concept and additional details. SonicWall wrote up a detailed post with more details regarding vulnerability CVE 2024-21683. So better get that patched. Well, and that's it for today. Thanks again for listening. Thanks for subscribing. We're available on YouTube. We're available for Amazon Alexa. And actually could use some reviews there. Someone did confuse the Stormcast with a weather report and didn't like the content. So thanks and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.